All right, welcome back. We're gonna look at some more examples of taking derivatives of trig functions. And as we go through these examples, I do have all the different rules over here for us to reference to kind of help you learn them. But anyway, let's get to our examples here. So we have the derivative of two cosine x minus 10 times sine x. So the derivative of this is going to be equal to two times the derivative of cosine x, right? And the derivative of cosine x is going to be negative sine x. So we're going to have negative sine x. And then we're going to be subtracting 10 times our derivative of sine x, which we can see from our rules is cosine x. So I'll write cosine x. And then we can simplify this, and our derivative will be equal to negative two sine x minus 10 cosine x. And that would be the answer to our derivative. Next up, we have the derivative with respect to theta, so d d theta, of tangent theta minus four times theta. And so this is going to be equal to the derivative of tangent theta. So if we go to our rules, we see that the derivative of tangent x is secant squared x, but remember we're using theta here. So we're gonna have that this is equal to secant squared theta, and then minus the derivative of four theta, which is just going to be four. Remember that if we have a variable to the degree of one, Derivative is just going to be the coefficient, so four. And that is the answer to that derivative. There's no simplifying we have to do there. It's just secant squared theta minus four. Okay, next we have the derivative with respect to t of pi times secant t minus one half times tangent t. So we'll start with this term and then we'll subtract the derivative of this term. So we'll have that this is equal to pi, because pi is a constant, remember not a variable, multiplied by the derivative of secant t. So let's go over to our rules and we'll see that the derivative of secant x is equal to secant x tangent x. So we just have to replace that x with t and our derivative here will be secant t times tangent t. Then we'll move on to our next term, which is going to be minus one half times the derivative of tangent t, which we can see from over here is going to be secant squared x or secant squared t in this case. So we'll have secant squared t. So now we could simplify this a little bit. We could pull out that common factor of secant t out of each term to make it a little bit nicer. You don't have to, but I'm going to do that because I think it looks nicer as a final result. So we'll have that this is going to be equal to secant t times pi tangent t minus one half secant t. So all we did there was take secant t out of this term and out of this one. So this would then be the answer for that derivative. Next we have the function x squared minus secant x. And we wanna know what is the value of the derivative at x equals pi. So we'll start this one by finding the derivative of our function. So we'll have f prime of x is going to be equal to the derivative of x squared, which is going to be two times x, and then one subtracted from our exponent minus the derivative of secant x, which from our rules we know is secant x tangent x. So we'll have secant x tangent x. So we can simplify and then we will have 2x minus secant x tangent x. And so now we're ready to plug in our value of pi. So we'll have that f prime of pi is equal to two times pi minus secant of pi times tangent of pi. So this is going to be equal to two pi and then minus secant of pi, which you may know to be negative one, or you could plug it in your calculator to find that it's negative one. And then tangent of pi is going to be zero. So this is actually just going to completely cancel out because anything times zero is zero. And we are going to be left with just two pi. That is the value of our derivative at the value x equals pi. And that would also be the value of the slope at that particular point on that function. All right, so for our next example, we have y is equal to negative one third times cotangent x minus one fourth times cosecant x. And we wanna know the value of the derivative or y prime at pi over two. So let's, once again, start by taking our derivative. We're going to have y prime is equal to negative one third times the derivative of cotangent x. And we can go to our rules and see that the derivative of cotangent x is negative cosecant squared x. So we'll have negative cosecant squared x minus one fourth times the derivative of cosecant x. And that's going to be equal to negative cosecant x times cotangent x. So we'll have negative cosecant x cotangent x. So now we can simplify. We'll have that this is equal to one third cosecant squared x plus one fourth cosecant x 
cotangent x. And all we did there is we noticed that we had two negatives multiplied, so they became a positive one-third, and we had a negative one-fourth and a negative term here, so that also became positive. So now we can plug in our value of pi over two and see what the value of the derivative is at that point. So we'll have y prime of pi over two is equal to one-third times cosecant squared of pi over two plus one-fourth of cosecant of pi over two times cotangent of pi over two. And this will be equal to one-third times one squared because cosecant of pi over two is equal to one. So we have two of them, right, that are being squared, plus one-fourth times cosecant of pi over two, we said is one, so that's going to be times one. And cotangent of pi over two is equal to zero. So then this is just going to be equal to zero and we'll be just left with this one-third times one squared. So this will just be equal to one-third. And so that would be the value of our derivative at x equals pi over two, which would also be the slope at that point on the function. For our next example, we have find the points that have horizontal tangent lines for the function square root of two times theta minus two times sine theta on the interval from zero to pi. And so all this means is we wanna find where on this function do we have points where the slope is zero. That is what a horizontal tangent line is. It is a line with a slope of zero. So we wanna find those points in our function that have the slope of zero. So what we'll do is we'll take the derivative of our function and we'll set that derivative equal to zero and solve for theta. And that will tell us where our function has a slope of zero, where it has horizontal tangent lines. So let's take the derivative. We'll have f prime of theta is equal the derivative of the square root of two times theta, which is just going to be the square root of two, right? When you take a derivative of a variable that's to the power of one, it's just the coefficient that's going to be your derivative. And then we have minus two times sine theta, so that's going to be minus two times the derivative of sine theta, which is cosine theta. And if you weren't sure, you could go over to our rules here and see that the derivative of sine x is equal to cosine x, so in this case it would be cosine theta since we're working in terms of theta and not x. And so this is already our simplest form of this function. We already have our derivative, so now we can just set it equal to zero and solve for theta. So we're gonna have zero is equal to the square root of two minus two cosine theta, and we'll subtract the square root of two from both sides. So we'll have that negative square root of two is equal to negative two cosine theta. And if we divide both sides by negative two, we will have a positive square root of two over two because those negatives will cancel is equal to cosine theta. So now all we have to ask ourselves is on this interval from zero to pi, where is cosine theta equal to the square root of two over two? And that's going to be theta equal to pi over four, right? If you plug pi over four into the cosine function, you will get the square root of two over two. And so that is going to be the only point on this interval where we have a slope of zero. But we only have one half of the point, right? We need a whole coordinate. So we have our theta value. We just need our output from our original function. So let's quickly find that. So I'm gonna clean up my work a little bit and then we will find the output value. All right, so let's plug pi over four back into our original function and figure out what that whole point is where we have a slope of zero. We'll have f of pi over four is equal to the square root of two times pi over four minus two times sine of pi over four. And we know that sine of pi over four is equal to the square root of two divided by two. And so we will have that this is equal to the square root of two times pi over four minus two times the square root of two over two. And then you'll notice that this two and this two will cancel. So we'll be just left with the square root of two here. So I'm gonna quickly write that. This is just going to be the square root of two. And then we see we have a common factor of the square root of two here in both terms. So we can pull that out and find that we have the square root of two times pi over four minus one. And so that is going to be our output value for pi over four, which means that finally we can write that our answer is going to be pi over four comma square root of two times pi over four minus one. And that is going to be the point on our function where we have a slope of zero, or we have a horizontal tangent line. So hopefully that made sense. All we did was we took the derivative of our function, we set it equal to zero, solved for a value of theta, and then we found the corresponding output value for that value of theta that we found. And that tells us where we have that horizontal tangent line on the function.
All right, so here's our final example. We wanna find the equation of the tangent line for y equals cosine x plus x at the point x equals zero. And so this is just another application of the derivative that we can now use in a setting where we have a trig function in our function of interest. So in order to find the equation of a tangent line at a particular point on a function, we're first gonna to need to find the derivative of our function, which is gonna represent the slope of our function at any point, and then plug in that point of interest to tell us what the slope is, and then we can go about finding finding our equation. So let's start by finding that derivative. We'll have that y prime is equal to negative sine x, right? The derivative of cosine x is negative sine x plus one because the derivative of just x is going to be one. So then we can plug in zero into our derivative here and we can find the slope of our function at x equals zero. So we'll have y prime of zero is equal to negative sine of zero plus one. And we know that sine of zero is just zero. So this is going to be equal to zero plus one, which is equal to one. And that is going to be our slope for the function at x equals zero. So now if we want to find the equation of the tangent line, remember to form an equation, we need a slope, which we have, and we also need a point that has an x value and a y value. So far, we only have that x value, right? Because when we go to create our equation, we like to use that point slope form where we have y minus y1 is equal to the slope times x minus x1. We need a y value and an x value as well as a slope. So we have our slope and we have our x value. We just need our y value. So we just have to plug zero into our original function to figure out what the y value is for that point. So I'll quickly do that down here. We have y of zero is equal to cosine of zero plus zero. And we know that cosine of zero is one. So this is going to be equal to one plus zero, which is equal to one. So now we know that our point is going to be zero comma one. So now let's plug in our point and our slope and let's finally find the equation of the tangent line for this function at x equals zero, or more specifically, our point zero, one. So we're gonna have y minus one is equal to our slope, which we found was one, times x minus zero. And if we simplify this, we'll have y minus one is equal to just x, because x minus zero is just going to be x, and then x times one is also x. And then we add one to both sides, and we'll find that our equation is y equals x plus one. And that will be our equation of our tangent line for this function at x equals zero or the point zero comma one. All right, so those are all the examples I had for taking derivatives of trig functions. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I will get around to answering them. But if you don't have any questions, that's all I have for now. So I will see you next time.